God made this perfect world and then it got destroyed. Adam sinned and God cursed it. So lions just eating wildebeest like they normally, peacefully do, is the appalling curse bestowed on the world because a rib woman was convinced by a talking snake to eat fruit from a magical tree. Makes sense. You know, we all, we confess the same way, don't we? <laughs> Always, it's not completely my fault. Brother, you're in the courts all the time. You see these guys, you know, in the, in the legal profession. Did you do it? Well, not exactly, Your Honor. You know, it's, it's the system's fault, you know, or something else. You get this all the time. Hmm. It's interesting also in Genesis chapter 3, God talks about the seed of the woman. Now, this is fascinating scripture. You know, for many years, scientists taught that the man's seed was all that was necessary to produce life. They thought the woman just provided the incubation place for the baby to grow. Scientists didn't know that half of the chromosomes came from the woman and half from the man until really in the last hundred years or so, 200, maybe 300 years. God said that in Genesis, the seed of the woman. If people just read their Bible, there's a whole lot of cool stuff in there. Heads up, people. The Bible contains no such knowledge. If God really wanted to reveal to us how human reproduction works, why not just include an entry-level physiology textbook as an appendix in his holy book and save hundreds of years of suffering and ignorance? Why reveal the most rudimentary knowledge of human reproduction in this half-assed way? This also goes for claims that the Bible foretold that washing your hands is effective sanitation, that ocean currents exist, and that lightning strikes produce radio waves. Whenever creationists do this, they are clearly reading between the lines. Next time they do this, just take some random passage from the Bible and interpret it such that it requires that people wear pink onesies and ride hippopotamuses to work in order to obtain salvation. It is just as credible. Okay, anyway, Genesis chapter 3 says, Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and conception. Here's part of your curse. You're going to have pain in childbearing and part of the curse, Adam's going to rule over you. That is actually part of the curse. <laughs> the man's the boss. Dark age in every sense. Okay. Anyway, Genesis said, God said, I'm going to bring, there's going to be thorns and thistles in the sweat of thy brow. You're made out of dust and you're going to return to the dust. Work is actually a blessing. Can you imagine if people that are wicked and vile had nothing to do all day but sit around and think up bad things to do? That's one of the dangers of our welfare system. The Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. Somebody gets hungry enough, they'll go to work. People that have, you know, problems with addictions and stuff, the work's the best thing for them. I don't have time. I gotta work. <laughs> you can tell this guy's never been hooked. Neither have I chill the hell out. After the curse, then, there was a flood. Finally, more bullshit for me to incinerate. Some people have asked, well, hey, if, if, there was, if God was mad at the world, why would he tell Noah to build a big boat? Why not just make everybody die? I'm interested. Can't God say, okay, I want everybody except Noah and his family to die? <clears throat> and they would die. God could do that. Why use a flood, anyway? Why make Noah spend, who knows, some people say it took him seven years to build the ark, some people say 120 years, I don't think the, the scripture is clear on the topic. It took him a long time to build a boat that size. Why do that? Well, interesting, things to consider about the flood. The flood left evidence. A miracle would not. There's no evidence for a worldwide flood either. Sure, the geological record indicates that many times in Earth's history sea levels have been higher, and that some continents were for the large part underwater, but of course we aren't so rational as to claim they were all the product of a single flood. Right? You can go all over the world and pick up fossils. There are fossils, which are evidence, like this giant trilobite. Something died. This is actually a replica of a fossilized arm to an octopus. Perhaps I spoke too soon. That is clearly a cephalopod skeleton. Octopuses have no bones in their arms, and even if the fossil is one of those exceptionally preserved flesh remnant fossils, that is just not the right shape to be an octopus arm. Fossilized jellyfish are found. How can that be? Slow, steady accumulation of lime-based sediment in a sun-baked lagoon with a narrow entrance, maybe? What's the chances of an egg fossilizing? You know, like, slim to none? The same chance of any fossilization occurring, I presume, and that's partly right. The chances of fossilization occurring are not slim to none, but highly specific geological, sedimentological, and geochemical conditions need to hold in order for fossilization to occur in the sense that Hovind is describing. However, some kinds of rock that are produced quite frequently are arguably fossils as well, like the siliferous limestone and chalk. And Satan knows this ought to draw people to say, wow, there was a flood, there was a disaster, this thing was buried quickly. 
Why would Satan want us not to think there is a flood? Oh, wait, I know. Because all evolutionists are really evil, murdering, thieving, raping, molesting, socialist, Nazi psychopaths who don't want to admit that God can wipe them out. And Satan has used very hard to deceive, he worked very hard to deceive people into thinking that the fossils that testify of God's judgment instead testify of millions of years. So Satan can make people think that sediments which obviously take quite a while to settle out and turn to rock, take quite a while to settle out and turn to rock. Hoovind, you don't seem to be understanding the bloody obvious point here. It's not that I want to continue with my sinful behaviour without worrying about God coming to judge me, and that Satan has brainwashed me into thinking that the geological record testifies the passing of millions of years of geological time. It's that I'm an unhedonistic, nice guy, who is trying to investigate the history of the Earth free from religious and personal bias, and that you are a moron, who hasn't the faintest clue about geology, trying to win me over into your ignorant, delusional fan club. Kids go to school for 16 years and they're taught over and over, oh, this is proof for evolution, millions of years. No, this is proof there was a judgment of God. Caught in the act, using evolution, which has not even been discussed in this entire seminar, as an umbrella term for scientific discoveries you don't like. That was a flood. That flood left evidence all over. You can just about any place in the world dig around and find fossils. They're everywhere. Proof of God's judgment. It would be a pretty weird flood if it produced what you find in a geological record. We find multiple, distinct layers of different kinds of sedimentary rock. Not what we would expect if a huge flood just came along and dumped an ass load of muddy sediment. We also find an ordered sequence of fossilized life forms within these rock layers which cunningly demonstrate various obvious morphological changes when arranged by time. There is also no statistical tailing off of fossilized creatures throughout the geological record. The fossils are found in discrete layers, and not at all anywhere else. Again, you would not expect this if a massive flood just dumped them all there at the same time. So far, any creationist attempt to explain these phenomena in the context of flood geology has either been completely stupid, above and beyond the level of most creationist arguments, or else non-existent. I'd love to see Mr. Hovind's attempt to explain these, assuming he ever attempts to. When you look at fossils, I like fossils, and man, I see things have changed. There's a reed that grows to, uh, today, it gets about 15 inches tall, little reed. They find fossils of them that used to be 150 feet tall. That was not a reed. Both it and the reed share a common ancestor. Okay, it would have looked kind of like a reed, but it was not a reed in the modern sense, in exactly the same sense that we didn't evolve from apes. Both us and apes share a common ancestor. Okay, it would have looked kind of like an ape, but it was not an ape in the modern sense. Why don't creationists seem to understand this? Something was very different before the flood. I mean, giant plants lived on this planet. Wait, didn't you insist earlier that plants aren't alive? Hmm... Huge coal fields. Something was different. Wait, coal fields means something was different? We could see coal form today from heat. Though our eyes deceive us, and this only happened before the flood? Plus, the flood, instead of a miracle, gave them warning to repent. They could watch Noah build on that boat every day. They couldn't watch a miracle coming. He could preach, hey, ten more days, you're all going to drop over. Yeah, right, yeah, right. But they could see that boat going together day after day. It was a constant reminder that they could have gotten saved. And they could have and should have. Well, what if they all decided to be saved at the last minute? Some serious modification had to be made to that Ark of Noah's to carry umpteen thousand people in addition to a pair of every animal. I debated this professor, and one of the kids in the audience, we had Q&A time afterwards, he said, Hovind, uh, could it rain enough to cover the earth? He said, you think it really rained enough to cover Mount Everest? He said, don't you know when it rains, the more uh, heat is released? I said, oh yeah, I understand, I taught physics, it's called the latent heat of uh, condensation. He said, well, heat is released when moisture turns to liquid, and if it rained enough to cover Mount Everest, it would completely cook the world. I said, you're right. He said, but you think it rained enough to cover Mount Everest? I said, no, I never said that. No, you're assuming that Mount Everest was there to begin with, and you're assuming all the water came from rain. Have you ever flooded the world so hard? You made Mount Everest?